Right, so after Remco's ridiculous win in San Sebastian, I thought I'd compilate some of my favourite ones. So this is Belgium Tour 2019, one of his first big wins really in Europe. You can see him attacking just after the cobbles, campanuts and the wheel, and he's allowed to do the puppy paws. And I want to focus on the difference in his position. There, he's quite narrow, but not too low. But you can see around this corner, anyway, Campanets ends up getting spat around this corner, unfortunately. Well, not spat, sorry, just crashes. But anyway, have a look at his position, because what you'll see is that he's he's significantly uh, wider than he is now. Like you can see here, his arms are a lot wider than his legs. And he's also just a little bit more upright if we compare to this year in San Sebastian. But we're going to go through a fair few races before. So you can see 4.6k, super high cadence, which is comes from junior riding when he was a TT boy and used to have to sort of spin at 110 cadence in order to get the speed out because they're gear restricted. But coming into the final of the race, you can see very happy with the win, um, takes the W. And it's a, it was a pretty big race, to be honest. It's his first first win, um, first professional win. So yeah, pretty, pretty excited. Anyway, this is Tour of Poland 2020 stage four. He counterattacks after Julian Alaphilippe went. And this is the thing with Remco. If you let him go like here, cheerio, like Eddie Dunbar on the radio back there, nah, cheerio. Remco is not that explosive, but the thing is to bring him back is a lot harder. So this is um, the same year, or sorry, a year later. Position pretty similar. Again, Puppy Paws really helps a rider like Remco. When he tucks his helmet down, he's just so aero. This is then going on to the next climb. You can still see it super, super aero. Um, again, elbows a little bit wider than what we're going to see at San Sebastian, where I'm really going to narrow it down. You can see Quinn Simmons is chasing him. But the thing with Remco is once he's away... Every climb, like I looked at his numbers, he did 370 watts for an hour and a half when he won in Drukken over there, over Acer. And it's like, if he's doing 370, let's say he weighs 60 kilos, he's doing 6.1 watts per kilo for an hour and a half. Maybe that's too much. But he's doing probably like 5.8. And he's so aero that like, on the flat, you're not catching him really. And on the climbs, he's got enough watts per kilo that again, you're not catching him. So he's so like everyone else. Anyway, this is him coming towards the final uh, the final climb, um, still with a super, super big lead. Um, I think he won, he, I mean, he's won some of these races. I think Tour of Poland, he won by almost two minutes, like a minute 52 to Fuglesang, which is absolutely unbelievable. Um, there was sort of a chasing group of Fuglesang, Yates, Micah, Ulysses, but he's just like impossible to bring back. And when I, I went through that power data, which I'll try and link now, people couldn't believe it. They were like, no nah, way, he didn't do 30, 370 watts. But it's like, he averaged 48k an hour on a very hilly course. So like, he just has, like, th there's no sort of like, oh yeah, fair enough. But you can see he's significantly skinnier now than he used to be. Not like skinny in terms of he's fat, just like not as much muscle on him. Like you'll see in a bit how much bigger he gets, but he's actually pretty petite at this moment. And he's like a pretty similar height to me, one meter 70. And he's like obviously leaner than me. And I'm, a, I'm like, you know, 60, 59 kilos quite, quite easily. And he's like not at all. Like he's a lot bigger. I think he's just a lot more chunky, to be honest. Like he's just got a lot more muscle mass on him. Um which I think is useful for the for the flat. This was the same year Jakobsen crashed and was in hospital, so he, he's got the number out, which was, I think, number 75, um, in order to commemorate for Jakobsen. It was a pretty big win for him, and it's pretty confident from Remco knowing that he's probably going to win this stage. By two minutes, is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I just can't believe it. He put th three minutes 20 in you, into Jonas Vingard, which is crazy. Here's to our Denmark. It was just off a hilly drag, and then he goes, again, the guys are on the radio. It's too late. If you don't go with Remco straight away, it's just cheerio, and like this lotto lad is trying to get on his wheel, and it's like it's just like you know you get on the wheel, but you're just gonna get spat. Um, I mean to be fair, this is uphill, so I have more sympathy. But on the flats, like just get on his wheel straight away. If you don't, you never bring him back. Like, it just does. It's not gonna happen. And I think riders massively underestimated how good Remco was at this moment. And you might say, how do they underestimate? But they just did. They didn't chase him properly. And like now he's got ten meters. There's sort of chaos behind. And, like, he laps the field. Okay, the laps were quite small. But you can see here, again, error position. He's a lot narrower, in my opinion, now than he used to be. Maybe that's just me. But I think he's gone from, like, 40 to 38 or something and tilts it in a bit more. This is everyone else chasing. And you can see here, again, super high gains, 57k an hour. Body super aggressive as well. Look at that hip angle. It's so tight. I made a video about Remco's hip angle before, saying that he can put so much power in despite having a really tight hip angle. Um, and that allows him to get so much, stay so aero but also do so much power. It's definitely something if you want to focus on breakaways, you should train, like getting a super aero. You can see he's coming up to the finish now. He's off the pedal, as you can tell, just by his technique and takes the massive W. And I mean, this one, again, he won by a minute and a half on like almost a pan flat course. I mean, this is absolutely unbelievable. Like, it's ridiculous. There's no one like it. This is Copper Bernocchi. 
2021. Unfortunately, it's in Italy, so it means uh, we have a lot of rain. Uh, but you can see it's in the break. The break is a big gap. It's like five minutes. And like, it's a hilly-ish course, but you just know, like, I, I, like uh, unfortunately, we lost all coverage. So we didn't go to see any attack. But this is interesting. Look how thick he is now. He got up to 65 kilos, I think, just for TT, because the world champs was pan flat in Belgium. He really, really wanted to win it. So you can see he's a lot more muscly. Like, look at his quads now. They're huge. And his calves. Um, and it's really ch uh, changed like how what sort of rider is. Here's a nice side on shot and you get to see his position again. It's pretty similar like to the beginning bit. Well, I would say he's a little bit lower than he used to be. Um, and his elbows look a little bit more tucked in. Like they're just not quite as wide. They're still, you know, wider than his legs, obviously. Like he's not on 36s or anything ridiculous, but he's definitely um, just a little bit narrower than he was. But, I, um, but still like in the drops quite a lot, but mainly just on the tops, uh, but super, super arrow. Like sorry, in the hoods, but super, super arrow. Um, you can see here again, it's a rainy race, but he takes the W. Cobb um, I'll just have a check, but I'm pretty sure he won this by an absolute stupid margin as well. Um, Cobb Benocchi, yeah, he won by 1 minute 49 to Cobb. This is unbelievable. It's like two minutes, it's a pan flat circuit. It's, cr it's just crazy. Anyway, this is Remco in San Sebastian. Big W for the man. And I want to talk about how much he won this by, because again, I can't show you the footage obvi for obvious reasons, but look at this position here. Now, Remco, okay, he attacked super far out. He he did 44 kilometers solo, which is just crazy, and won by almost two minutes. And it was strong people. He literally rode Adam Yates off his wheel. But look at this position. I'd say it's a little bit more aggressive at the front end, just a little bit. His elbows are significantly more tucked in. Like, if you look there, a lot more shrugged, as well as just being, like, if you look at the top part of it, it's a lot more shrugged, as well as also, like, just tucking them in more like you can see his hood, hood angle of his hoods are further in like if you look at the hoods they're not parallel to the bars they're tucked in which allows him to be a slightly more arrow um because his, his uh, arms are obviously narrower than the bars are um which is super super good as well uh you can also see he's a lot leaner like look at his look if you look at his quad like his, if you look at straight on on the right that quad you can see a lot more like definition than you previously had just because he was a lot more bulky and i think a lot of that bulk probably wasn't necessarily fat was more just like more muscle glycogen a bit more muscle a bit more water weight things like that which didn't matter but might help in performance but he said he's the lightest as ever but anyway cheers for watching hope you did enjoy this little video about remco's top five solo performances and we'll see you in the next one